Hello friendly faces and welcome to another video. Well as you can see it's quite blurry today but here's the plants that we staked a few weeks ago and as you can see they're holding up quite well and the small green stakes have blended in with the plants very nicely you can hardly see them. Now up the allotment I had a bit of a disaster. There's a sunflower there that I forgot to stake. And as you can see the wind has snapped it off right down at the base so that's going to have to go on a compost heap which is a bit of a shame because it was coming along quite nicely so what I've had to do is just find a bit of wood bang it in as a stake quickly and support the other two sunflowers that are there this time of year birds will have finished nesting so it's a good time to trim hedges and shrubs although you should always check just to make sure there are no birds nesting in the uh, place you're going to trim Another thing to continue doing is to keep cutting back and deadheading finished flowers. Here we've got some lambs here that's finished flowering so that needs to be cut back. And also... So what we're going to cut back is this bay tree. And as you can see it's got a bit unruly and there's some quite big thick stems that kind of need cutting out to help get it back to the shape that it used to be. Now you're going to need some tools to do this. You can use a power trimmer but I like to use hand shears. This is a typical pair of hand shears. Now, the best sort to get are ones like this. They've got a wavy edge. So what the wavy edge does, it will trap the stem of the plant and help you to cut it easier and it won't keep slipping out. What you're also going to need is some secateurs and maybe some long handled pruners or loppers like these to help cut bigger stems. So what you need to do, if you can, is find a place that's going to give you good access to make the first cuts. So the first cuts are quite important. There will be the guides that you follow when you trim the rest of the bush. Now there is a bit of a technique to this. What you have to try and do is keep the shears going level. So here I'm going straight up and the idea is to try and keep it going in a straight line, not deviate, not go off on a slant. Because what that will do, that will give an un uneven shaped bush and yeah, it look a bit messy. Another thing you need to do as you're trimming, if you can, is step right back from the bush and have a look and see what it looks like. And getting as far away as you can, you'll be able to see where there's like little bits you've missed. And then, once you've done that bottom bit, get your secateurs and just trim off any bits that you've missed down the bottom. So here's the end result. Now what I try to do with this bay every year is trim it into like a cylindrical shape so it's nice and round at the top it's flat. Now at the back here at the wall that can be a bit tricky so you need secateurs on that and also around the other side next to the side of the shed that can be tricky as well so you need the secateurs on that you can't really get into that with shears. So this conifer is also going to need a trim, again going to use the hand tools and again just have a quick check in side to make sure there's no birds nesting, which there isn't. Right, it's a slightly different technique on this one, instead of going straight up, the shears go at a slight angle to produce a pyramid shape. So we're up the allotment now, and then for Father's Day, I got given this uh, digging spade and like most tools you get what you pay for and this is quite a good one. It's got a stainless steel digging head which means it's resistant to rust, resistant to alkalines in the soil and it's nice and easy to clean. It's also got a good ash shaft. Now, as you can see here the actual head itself has got some treads on it. Now these are important because when you're digging all day or a weekend for a couple of days you're going to get sore feet so always make sure you get treads when you get a spade then this is what we've the spade up the allotment for pick up some cedar potatoes this is a variety called red duke of york they've got a nice red skin on them and i'm going to dig up one plant so this is it from one plant not a lot but it's not too bad there would have been more if i'd have been able to get out in the hot weather and water now it's best if you can to use paper sacks or hessian sacks. This will help to stop them turning green and to stop them from sprouting. 
So here they are, all washed and ready to be cooked in the pot. And here they are, one hour after digging on the dinner plate. Finally, if you've got soft fruit like raspberries, keep continuing to pick them, because the more you pick, the more you'll get. Well, I hope that was informative and you enjoyed it. Remember, if you've got any comments, leave them below, or if you've got any questions, send them to Leslie, and she'll send them to me, and I'll see if I can answer them. And uh, bye, and see you next week.